I did want to just give a little bit of background uh, when we talk about uh, Oracle EPM. Again, it's the cloud-based version of, of Hyperion. So um, whether you're a current Hyperion user uh, or even if you have like budgeting, forecasting, closed processes that are like in Excel or in other tools, you know, with the Oracle Cloud EPM, you can really bring that all into one solution, one database, scalable, auditable, and repeatable to make things a lot easier. Um, the other thing for folks on the line, if you're not using a, a current solution for some of this, or you're considering, um, you know, your current uh, Hyperion instance or Excel-based process or competitive solution, um, and you're using an Oracle ERP, uh, there's been a lot of communication around moving ERP to the clouds, whether you're PeopleSoft, eBiz, or uh, GDE, or SAP, you name it. Uh, and you're curious about the cloud, a lot of organizations will start with EPM because it's a much quicker timeline, um, and you kind of get a taste for what it's like. So something to consider, um, not as big as a, you know, a potentially a fusion implementation. Um, these implementations can go in weeks. Um, so things to keep in mind. Um, just a little more background on EPM and, and what it entails. So it's really a suite of cloud-based tools. So it's not just one thing. If you're using um, Hyperion or a cloud-based tool today, it's not just a budgeting solution. It's not just a consolidation solution, although those are two of the main uh, things people use it for. Um, it really helps with a, a lot of different financial and accounting and operational processes. So whether it's measuring profitability and reporting, and that's what I'll get into a little bit today, <clears throat> the whole close process and so not just consolidations, but things like uh, account reconciliations, uh, tax filing, things like that. And just aligning the organization too. Um, I'll talk about that in just a second. But historically, it's always been known as uh, tools for helping with the planning and the forecast um, or with your close and consolidation process. When you say Hyperion out there, a lot of people still think of those uh, consolidation and reporting tools that um, used to come with. Now it's all part of one suite. So you decide what you want to deploy. Uh, and included in all that is the reporting aspect, which we'll get into today. Um, even some things around uh, the ability to align the organization. So if you add a new account in your general ledger and you want to add it into two or three other systems, you can have this. Uh, some of the tools in the suite help align all those processes and, and help with the governance around it. And then, of course, the, the platform itself, um, you know, all being hosted by Oracle, uh, Everything is updated monthly for you. So all the hardware, all the updates, all the upgrades that you've gone through in the past, you know, all that goes away. So what we do with at Alir is we take all this leading uh, technology and some of the leading practices that are built into it and bring in our own industry knowledge, bring in our own implementation knowledge of what organizations are using it for. So whether it's the profitability and reporting um, components of the tool, you know, really focusing on the metrics and analytics that's going to drive success for the business. Um, if we're talking about aligning the business function, so to make sure, again, if you have an acquisition, how do I incorporate that acquisition into the fold of the whole application and into my ERP? Um, shortening the close, this is something really the focus of um, EPM and Hyperion for years has been providing people with insight and automations to make that uh, close process, you know, as quick as possible, as reason as possible, reasonable as possible um, for the business. And then forecasting and budgeting. Again, we bring in these progressive practices of, you know, really focusing on driver-based budgeting for things like your margin and what those key drivers are. Um, Zero-based budgeting, so really starting from scratch and bottoms up or maybe your operational expenses, and then getting into more rolling forecasts uh, and focusing not just on the short term, but the long term. So being able to look at this for strategic planning as well. That's the sort of knowledge that we'll bring into every implementation and try to apply using this leading technology. So again, 
you know, we'll often get the question, well, why do I want to move to the cloud? <clears throat> and some of the things we touched upon all, already, but the total cost of ownership. So when we talk about the ownership, it is things like the servers that you maintain, the updates and the upgrade uh, implementation costs that you might pay for. All that goes away with this cloud-based solution. It does use a lot of best practices built into it. It comes built with rolling forecasts and it's up to uh, groups like ourselves to make sure that we're applying that correctly and bringing that into your fold. And then enabling a more agile organization, what's really neat about the cloud is, you know, there's these data centers that they have out there, um, but as a user, all you need is a browser and you could start, um, you know, looking at reports, start doing analytics. You can even start entering your budget directly on your phone. And whether you use Apple, uh, Android, uh, Microsoft, doesn't matter. It's just using the browsers of those uh, tools to start interacting with it. And then another big component that we see with the, the cloud-based suite is it frees up a lot of processes, right? So making sure that the availability is there 24 seven. Um, the performance, because Oracle owns the hardware and the data centers, they can really beef up these servers to a point, you know, that more than I've seen for a lot of on-prem applications in my past. Um, and the servers are fine-tuned specifically to handle the databases of EPM. Obviously very secure, not only is the software and the hardware secure, but literally the building, we have armed guards standing outside the building protecting this information. So uh, more security than you've ever seen before. And then support. Uh, support is available at the click of a button. In addition to that support, there's a built-in community where you can ask questions to product development. You can ask questions to other clients that are using the suite um, and how they're uh, using the application. So it's a really nice forum that's, that's available. And of course, we're really only talking about the applications, uh, specifically the EPM application today. But just know that Oracle offers a whole stack in the cloud, whether it's the database, operating system, server, storage, uh, all those components are available on the cloud as well. And over on the right, you can see, you know, the performance that uh, people have seen, the security at every layer, um, and then just that availability virtually 24-7 um, with 99.9% .9 uh, SLA for availability. So that's a quick run through of, you know, what is EPM Cloud? Why would I go there? What are some of the benefits? Um, so what I wanted to do was just take a minute to, to walk through a little bit of some of the new features. So whether you're an existing Hyperion shop or even if you're a cloud EPM organization already, or if this is your first time seeing EPM or if you've seen it a little bit in the past, you're used to using Excel and other tools like that, you know, we can take all that and we can, um, show you how this will look you know, directly in this suite. So I'm gonna pause here for a second. I'm just gonna get out of my mode and come back to spreadsheet. So one of the nicest things with, um, and I'm gonna stop my camera here for a second so you can all focus on, on what I'm demonstrating. Uh, one of the nice things about the cloud is there's a component built in called SmartView. And the SmartView tool allows you to literally come into the application. You'll see this little add in here called SmartView and bring in data, you know, directly at the clickable button. So if I wanted to, let's say I'll scrap this data all together and I want to see, show me what's my FY20 Jan, uh, we'll go back to gross profit. I can just type in what I need, uh, click the refresh button, and I'll start to see data. So there's no formulas, there's no links or anything like that. It's using Excel um, with this SmartView add-in, so a tool that you're already familiar with, and you have all the capabilities and 
features built into Excel. Uh, you'll see that a little pop-up came up when I did my refresh, and it's allowing me to further analyze the data by different areas of the business. So I'm looking at this for the sales east. If I wanted to look at it for international sales, I just change my little drop down, and I'll see my numbers update automatically. If I want to see it by different products, different base data, um, it's that easy to pick and choose how you want to see the data. This is all based on the dimensionality of your application and how you want to view it. Now that I have my data there, I can actually just double click and start to drill in to see my information. So all it is is a double click. And again, there's no links or anything like that. It's pulling directly based uh, directly from the database based on what I have in my rows and my column, and it's just letting me investigate my chart of accounts here. I can further double click and start to see, okay, what is that revenue made up of? Here's all the pieces uh, you know, that make up my revenue for this particular sample organization. Is that... Yeah. Okay. Uh, one question, is it possible to zoom in at all a little bit on this or no? Absolutely. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. And I'll do that to any other screen. So I'll bring this up to 200. Um, so again, because it's Excel, I could do whatever I want with this. If I don't like those rows to be displayed, I could just delete those rows, hit refresh again, and have a new query. Uh, if I want to use certain just Excel features and functions, right, where I want to see a six month view of my data, I'll just drag Jan across, and that's just an Excel feature. Click Refresh, and here's a six-month view of my data. So it's that easy to start to interact with the information with the database. Again, a tool you know, format it any way you want, uh, and bring in the data any way you want. Because this is Excel, again, I could do things like, hey, let me see a six-month trend of this. So if I want to do some charting and graphing and maybe make this look a little prettier, I could just bring in Excel's 3D charts, right? Here's my gross profit um, over time. Let me see it for one organization versus another. And it'll update automatically. Or let me see it for last year's. And all I have to do to see last year's is just paste that information across in my columns. Um, Go to my smart view, click refresh, and this will update all that information based on what it sees here. So real easy to use. Um, again, those of you familiar with this already, hopefully you'll see some features that you haven't seen before. Now, because this add-in is part of the Microsoft Office suite, uh, it works in things outside of Excel too. So if you have any Word documents where you're doing some external reporting and you have a lot of narrative around it, you could bring this data in. Or if you have PowerPoint information and you do an annual deck or a quarterly presentation to the team, I can literally come in, grab this information and say, you know what, I'm gonna copy this intersection of data. I'm not gonna copy like control C or copy in Excel. I'm literally copying the intersection of the data in the database, go out to a PowerPoint deck where I might have my financial results. Um, I'll see that smart view is added in here. And just by clicking that, that paste button, um, I'm bringing in those values into my PowerPoint presentation and I can resize it, move it anywhere I want. Uh, and it's just asking me to do a refresh to make sure I have the latest data. And with just a click of a button, those values appear. Now, again, these values show that it's a live connection directly to the database for the month of January, for FY19, for Sales East. Um, this is specifically for February. This is specifically for March. Now that I'm in PowerPoint, I can actually move these values anywhere I want. I can update my whole deck too by managing my point of view. So if I move forward a quarter or I wanna see it for last year, I could just change one of the point of views uh, and it will update the entire deck for me. You can even bring in like um, 
like I mentioned in Word, and this works the same in PowerPoint, you can have a lot of narration around the uh, numbers and then just have that individual cell be the latest data to show you know, how are our revenues doing for this new acquisition that we had uh, back in 20. So it can pull that information direct as well. So just keep that in mind, works great with PowerPoint, works great with Word, um, more tools that you already know. Going back into the Excel world, uh, you know, I'm showing something that I kind of built ad hoc, uh, but you could also use this for, you know, a little more formal reporting where you're doing whatever type of formatting you want. And then it's just Excel formatting, just like you're used to. Um, and if I wanted to update any part of this report, I could just say, show me FY19, click refresh, and this fully formatted report will update all the numbers for me automatically. So instead of using it just for ad hoc, it can be used for more formal reporting. However, the suite comes with a lot of different capabilities when it comes to reporting. SmartView is just one of them, and two options of how you interact in SmartView throughout the Office suite, more formal-based reports, or more ad hoc manner. If I go into the tool itself, just to give you a sense of what it looks like, this is the home screen. Um, and I'm specifically in the planning application, but this works uh, across the suite. So here I can have things like notes to the whole community, any announcements of what we're doing. Um, you'll notice I have recents where I've recently been favorites, kind of like most of your browsers would have. Uh, and then I have this whole suite of different functionality based on what I'm doing. So if I'm doing budgeting and forecasting, I might need to enter data, uh, but it comes built in with a lot of different features where they've moved a lot of the technical components uh, into the user interface and made it a lot easier to interact with. Um, so whether you want to give users step-by-step -step tasks to complete a process, whether you want to have a formal approval process, that's all built in. Whether you want to do predictions of your data, there's even an AI component that's built into the application now in the cloud. Um, or just help educate the team. There's an academy in here with a whole bunch of videos that help you understand how to use solutions like SmartView, how to use the reporting and dashboarding tools. Um, but I'm gonna start with just some of the dashboarding that's available. And with dashboards, these are intended to be more interactive. It's using that exact same database that we were looking at in the cloud or in SmartView, sorry, um, in just a web interface. So if I wanted to have you know, pretty looking key metrics that help me do better analytics, on my operating expenses. I'll show just an example of that. In this view, I'm looking at my operating expenses to compare my plan to my forecast to actuals. How are we doing you know, from previous years? How are we looking from our targets? Um, the second group kind of does a breakdown of our uh, expenses. Are we forecasting appropriately? We might be over forecasting for some things compared to how our actuals are coming in. Um, so it gives you that insight to really think about as you go forward. Um, what kind of trends am I seeing with, with things like our expenses? And obviously this could be for margin, this could be for operational data, uh, it could be for your headcount, you name it. Um, or even just a compare of different versions in different years. So what's nice about these dashboards are they're completely interactive. I could pop these out so if I want to see a better view of it. Uh, I could do that. If I want to investigate this, just like I was doing in SmartView, where I double click, I just click into these and I can see the breakdown of data, you know, with, with a point and click. What's also really nice about these is just like Excel, I can change dashboards at the click of a button. Here I could do the same thing. So if I didn't want to see a bar chart, I wanted to see more of a pie chart, you know, I just change it to pie. I have some features and options here. You can get really sophisticated on everything that you see. There's even opportunities to bring in like geographical data and paste that in. And again, there, the intent is not to have a technical background or any coding that you need to do to um, build these solutions 
all these are intended for you know, organizations like finance and accounting to be able to build on their own. So from a dashboarding perspective, pretty easy to create. If you can create rows and forms um, in Excel, you can create these dashboards the same way here. It's just a matter of kind of getting the dimensionality or the, the key um, components of the application that you want to be brought in, brought in. So whether that's looking at analytics by customer or by vendor or by cost center, um, profit center, uh, by product, you name it, you know, we can bring any of those components in. And that's what we've seen with a lot of organizations is bringing all those details in. So along with these types of dashboards on SmartView, there's another option here called reports. And again, I'm just scratching the surface on some of the reporting features that are available and giving you just a taste of each one. Um, but these reports are generally used for more formal reporting um, and for distributing reports. So if you have a bunch of users who every month need a deck or every quarter or every year need a, a set of reports, whether it's the annual operating plan, annual budget, um, your quarterly close information, your financial package uh, for the month, all those reports can be built in here. Um, and there's some of the solutions offer out of the box reporting with those. But just to give you an example, since I'm in the budgeting world, is bringing in like an income statement from a budget perspective. Uh, again, you could put in logos, but a, a user again could just have the link to the web, click a button, or even bringing this up on their phone where they could start to see what the data looks like. And again, I can change this to any year I want. I can change this to any entity I want. Um, and you can make these somewhat drillable. So I can click in, but I'm not giving the user complete ad hoc capabilities. I'm giving them specific views that I want them to see. Uh, this way they're not doing anything you know, necessarily on their own. With all these reporting tools too, I can download these as PDFs or distribute them as PDFs. I could download it directly into Excel because we all know some people just like to see the data in Excel at the end of the day. Um, that is an option. Um, or if you wanted to do analytics on it and drill into it even further, you can download it into SmartView as an ad hoc and then start to pivot and spin the data around just like I was doing earlier. Along with these uh, reporting tools and reporting views, there's a bursting option built into it where I could burst a book of reports or I could create my own type of burst. And again, instead of having that an automated process behind the scenes, um, administrators and users could actually create these bursts any way they want. So this is something that's just available on the cloud. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you pick the report you want. You pick the point of view that you want people to pull from. So maybe it's the current year. You determine if you want it sent out as a PDF or as a spreadsheet. Um, and then you determine what the email says that they're going to get. So now everyone's going to get an email with this information sent to them. Um, the attachment will just say income statement. But the email itself, you can even put what you want the subject to be, what you want the message to be, and put some of the functions of, hey, what's the name of this report? What year are we looking at? Things like that. And then you add the users right here too. You can even define things where it's different users for different entities or that let the security take over. So very easy to create like a complete distribution of these reports out to end users, out to a, the executive team. Um, and if I wanna execute this batch, I could do this right here. Now, I don't like to come in and do anything manually. So another really nice feature that they've added that includes this bursting capability is to schedule things. Um, for those of you familiar with some of the scheduling tools in the past, or maybe that's owned by IT in a scheduled process, uh, what Oracle brought into the user interface is a very simple um, capability to create jobs. Uh, and in these jobs, I could do all sorts of scheduling. So it doesn't just have to be reporting, but if I wanted to run a rule, I wanted to import data, export data, um, 
refresh the database, clear out certain data. If I wanted to run the AI that comes with it, I could use that auto predicts to run things. Uh, but if I just wanted to build on that report that I want to distribute, and instead of me coming in at the end of the day, uh, every night and creating a process, I'm just going to create a job for that. And I'm going to say, um, nightly p &L report. And it's going to be sent out daily. We're going to start sending it out tonight. Uh, we'll do it at 5 p.m. So you can pick the time, obviously. Um, click OK. Click Next. And that's it. So now that report is going to run and burst out to anyone I put in my uh, list in the report list. Um, but I just scheduled a job uh, that will run as a regular process. Um, you know, again, I don't have to do anything around that. It's it's finished with this last step. So some nice features, you know, right in the solution that allow you to schedule those jobs right here. So that's a quick run through of uh, the reporting, you know, that's available. Some of the features and functions within the web um, that's available and some of the different types of reporting, the dashboards, the reports, the ability to um, launch jobs, uh, the ability to maintain the application, and even some of the new features around the uh, automatic prediction that's built into the application. So I'm going to pivot back into the PowerPoint real quick here. Um, and just give you some some key takeaways, you know, that we want you to remember as a part of this overall presentation. So, you know, this is truly meant to be a finance and accounting owned solution for managing your plan, uh, close, count rec, validation, profitability solution. Um, you're not expected to have a technical background. There's no need for coding. Uh, if you know Excel, if you know how to pivot things around a little bit, you know how to use this solution already. So the Office add-in in SmartView, um, you know, it's using tools that you already know, but bringing in the data, you know, that you need within those tools. Um, all the new features that are available in the cloud, the process scheduling, uh, where you can have automations for loads and calcs, uh, report distribution, automatic predictions, um, all that is now done through the interface. So we do have some real simple um, migration options. If you are an existing Hyperion shop and you want to move to the cloud, it can be pretty easy to, to move those. Uh, that suite. we've done it in as little as you know six, seven, eight weeks for a couple organizations, um, just taking what they have today and moving it over to the cloud interface and then coupling that with a couple tweaks to their current app to make it fine tune and a little bit of additional training. And last, you know, it's it's a great way to kind of dip your toe into the cloud. So if you are thinking about your ERP or, um, you know, HCM solutions, moving those into the cloud where it might be a little bigger uh, opportunity, sometimes these reporting solutions, these closed consolidation budgeting processes could be a, could be a little simpler. Uh, so it allows our implementations to be a, uh, generally speaking, a little bit quicker. So good way to kind of dip your toe in. So those are really my five key takeaways. Um, and, and that kind of ends my part of the presentation here today. Uh, we did want to move on to just, I think, one other poll question. Chris, I think you have for the team. Yeah, that's correct. So here's a poll number two. Um, if you could answer this. So basically we want to do a follow-up, um, like a, almost like a series on EPM. And, um, you know, obviously we could have, if any of you would like to have a more specific conversation of, about your specific company and a demo or a conversation, like we can do that, but we are going to turn this into a little bit more of a series. And if there's any topics here that you would be interested in learning more about, we listed a couple here with a budgeting and forecasting deep dive. Um, AI within Oracle uh, EPM, 
account recon, uh, deep dive, um, or all smart view capabilities. Um, so as I mentioned, I think based on maybe some of our responses here, it might uh, lead us into what we want to maybe go um, do first in our next series. But again, we can always uh, break away for a, a specific company conversation if you ever would like to as well. So we'll wait here a couple more seconds for the results to come in. Looks fairly even, um, but really leading uh, AI, which has been obviously a pretty uh, big topic these days, um, AI within Oracle uh, EPM and uh, account recon deep dive. It seemed like they kind of led, led the charge there a little bit. So we'll take this into consideration, obviously, as we uh, make that next series. We're kind of leaning toward maybe like a end of February, early March type area. Um, for that the second series. And then I know that uh, for those of you that are attending some of the conferences coming up in uh, uh, April and, and May, or, you know, we'll be attending several of those that we can always have conversations as well. Sounds like we, we might have to do all four sessions, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Seems like interest in every, every area though. Yeah, that's great. Um, if you'd like to move forward to the next slide there, Scott, and then also if anyone has uh, questions, please uh, start inputting them in the chat. If if you have any questions that you'd like us to address today, we can use this time for some Q&A. Um, I don't see any questions at this moment, but um, we'll give it a, another minute or so. If you do have any questions that you'd like Scott to address or myself, we would be happy to. Otherwise, okay, we'll move it forward then and kind of cover the last couple of slides. If you have questions, obviously you can reach out to us as well or continue to put it in chat, but we're about to wrap up here, Scott. So if you want to go to the next slide. Yeah, I think uh, in the Q&A section, I do see a couple uh, Q&A, not in the chat, but in the Q&A button there. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah. It looks like uh, one, can we share the deck? Um, yes, would be the answer to that. We will have a follow-up. Anyone that registered... Uh, for the event, um, within the next couple of days, we'll receive an email reply um, that also will have access to the recording as well um, that you can that you can forward and you can share with any others or watch again at your own time. So we can share the deck. Um, another question is uh, how can we or how can this help with manual reconciliations? And I'm sorry if we covered it, but uh, Scott, can you address that? Yeah, I, I really just skimmed the surface in an account reconciliations by mentioning it a couple of times. So uh, definitely something we could do a deep dive on as one of those four topics. Um, so, you know, for manual reconciliations where people are doing them, generally speaking in a spreadsheet or you know, some offline system, um, what the solution provides is a few things. So where you might have spreadsheets for your you know, monthly, quarterly, annual account recs. You might have a package that you have to present to uh, um, your auditing team. Um, what the solution can do is really control and contain that process, um, scale it so that you can have different processes for monthly, quarterly, annually. Uh, it comes pre-built with uh, an auditing package and different types of reporting um, that you can use for kind of finalizing your account rec. Um, it can be built into your overall close process too, and you can have all the different tasks necessary for the account reconciliation. It has a workflow built into it, so I can see who my um, uh, reconcilers are, who my approvers are, and give access to anyone else who might need visibility to it. And it just takes that you know, whole component out of Excel, out of spreadsheets, where there's risks, um, with auditability, there's risk with scalability, and there's just risk with overriding data that maybe you shouldn't. Um, the other really nice thing with, with the account reconciliation solution, again, uh, I'll try to keep this, try to keep this short, is you can build rules into it. So based on certain attributes or characteristics, uh, rules that would say, you know, if there's a variation of a dollar or 50 cents or 
there's no balance change, automatically reconcile this item for me. Um, there's also a matching component built into it, which is really nice that allows you to take detailed transactional information, let's say from a bank statement, um, and bring in all your subledger you know, details and match those transactions automatically uh, using some of that AI capabilities and then just give you the output of here's what didn't match or give you the opportunity to match those uh, right in the application. So not only is it repeatable, uh, auditable, rules can be based, but the matching component that's built into it too can really um, you know, help with the details and help you find those uh, discrepancies between your data before, um, you know, before they kind of rear their head. Perfect. Thanks, Scott. Um, one additional question was, can you go to a cloud for EPM and not uh, with your financials? And that's a, it's a really good question. Um, the answer is yes. And I think that's why um, a lot of people are looking at, at, at whether you're on Hyperion and moving to a cloud solution or whether you're using you know, an Excel or a separate secondary app. Um, we have a lot of different PeopleSoft users or even um, rate planes or other um, financial systems that, you know, this is the first module and you can do this as a standalone. Um, and we have a lot of these different users that are going first with cloud EPM um, as their cloud journey and then maybe move in financials at a later date as well. And I don't know, Scott, if you want to elaborate to my response there. But. Yeah, yeah, there's really no dependency um, to, uh, you know, what is that sort of system. Um, if there, you know, there are advantages if you're, if you're cloud ERP financials, but to Chris's point, it doesn't have to be. We have organizations on all sorts of different general ledgers, all sorts of different financials, um, whether they're on-prem or even a competitor to Oracle. Uh, you know, we've we've kind of seen it all. This really stands alone, and um, that's why it's you know easier to kind of set up and um, get going with the implementation uh, rather than some of those bigger projects. So definitely could go EPM first, and then bring your financials you know along afterwards. Thank you, Scott. And that is all the questions I see at this time. So in wrapping up, um, I know I mentioned this earlier in the presentation, but you can follow us at uh, Alir Inc. Um, we have other uh, social platforms that you can follow us on between Facebook and uh, Twitter and, and YouTube and LinkedIn and et cetera. Um, we have a really strong website at uh, www.alir.com where we actually have all of our different cloud practice areas, including some specific EPM and success stories that, um, it's really well detailed if you're kind of wondering yourself on, you know, what other customers may have done this and what was the story along with it. It'd be a good good way for you to maybe start um, to look into that. Otherwise, you can reach out to us as well. And we can always have uh, Scott and myself or, or Scott just follow up and, and have a separate conversation of what you might be thinking and maybe give you some guidance along the way. So um, just want to thank you all for uh, for joining today. Um, again, the follow will be a... Uh, a recording in, in a in a deck to be able to view at your own time. And uh, again, let us know if you have any questions and uh, have a good rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.